no basis for linking palm oil to deforestation. Stop raising sensitive issues and actions which can jeopardize public order. Good afternoon, welcome to News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mother Mohammad dismissed as baseless the claims linking palm oil to deforestation, saying they are unfair and unjustified. He said these claims bring a negative impact to Malaysia, which depends highly on the palm oil industry to raise the socio-economic well-being of the people in order to help Malaysia achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Tun Dr. Mahathir said this also has significant detrimental effects on oil palm growers who include 650,000 smallholders as well as another 1.5 million people employed throughout the palm oil supply chain. We have been accused of putting the need for development before the needs of our forests. The issue of deforestation for oil palm plantation has always been championed by our detractors. The truth is the palm oil industry in Malaysia has been developed sustainably and responsibly. The government is adhering to the sustainable development goals, has put in measures to ensure this industry does not cause environmental degradation as well as to avoid unsustainable practices such as destruction of forests and wildlife habitats. Speaking when opening the Hutan Kita journey through our rainforest exhibition at the Kuala Lumpur Tower, he said the Malaysian palm oil industry is now focusing on improving productivity and yields rather than expanding land to avoid deforestation and direct or indirect land use change. He said that apart from that, restrictions on the planting of oil palm on peatland as well as permanent reserve forests have also been imposed. The exhibition is being held at the Tower Terrace of the Kuala Lumpur Tower from the 24th of August to the 22nd of September. Neptune Dr. Mahathir also said that the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil or MSPO certification scheme will be made mandatory commencing 1st of January 2020. Malaysia stands proud to share some of our sustainable practices with the world. Malaysia has introduced the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil Certification Scheme in 2013 and will be made mandatory commencing 1st January 2020. This certification wholly and clearly addresses global concerns on the sustainable production of palm oil, including that of biodiversity loss, greenhouse gas emissions, and the destruction of wildlife habitats. Through the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil scheme, every drop of palm oil produced in Malaysia will be subscribing to sustainability practices. The Prime Minister said the certification wholly and clearly addresses global concerns on the sustainable production of palm oil, including that of biodiversity loss, greenhouse gas emissions and the destruction of wildlife habitats. Dr. Mahathir also said that Malaysia has not renegated on the pledge he made at the Rio Earth Summit in 1992 that the country is committed to maintaining at least 50% of the land mass under forest cover. During his opening speech, Tun Dr. Mahathir also announced that the Merbau tree is now the national tree. The Prime Minister said capable of towering up to 50 metres in height, the Merbau, one of the tallest trees in the tropical region, could become a symbol of national pride. In conjunction with this auspicious event, I would like to take the opportunity to announce that the Merbau tree Merbau tree, otherwise known as Melaka tea, has been chosen as our national tree. (laughs) 
if he's hardly nature, I believe that all Malaysians can take the merbau as a symbol of national pride. Meanwhile, Water, Land and Natural Resources Minister Dr. Xavier Jayakuma said the Merbau tree was selected as a symbol of the integrity of the nation's forest as a result of sustainable management and the conservation of the Malaysian biodiversity. Uh, dia punya kriteria ialah ya, pokok kebangsaan ini mesti uh, kita dapat di Semenanjung, di Sarawak dan di Sabah. So ini satu-satu spesiesnya yang kita dapat di tiga-tiga kawasan. So sebab itu kita bagi kita uh, tun tun pilih merbau. Nombor dua ini ialah kayu yang keras. Ya dia keras, dia gagah, uh, dia boleh naik tinggi uh, dan um, kita sekarang gunakan merbau untuk banyak uh, perkara di dalam uh, negara kita. Now, at a separate event, Dun Dr. Mather said the government will study the claim made by United Nations human rights experts on the rate of poverty in the country. The UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, Philip Alston, was reported as saying that official figures on poverty in the country were vastly inaccurate and do not reflect realities on the ground. Reporters, when met after attending the My Parentis 4th anniversary and fundraising dinner in Pataling Jaya last night, the Prime Minister said the government would only review the methodology to ascertain poverty levels if necessary. I yeah, will study what they say to we'll find out whether it is true or not. If it is necessary, we will. Elston was quoted as saying that official numbers relied on outdated measures, with the poverty line remaining at the same level for decades, despite increasingly high costs of living. Now, police have warned all quarters to stop raising sensitive issues and to immediately seize all forms of action that can aggravate the situation, including planned peaceful assemblies. Inspector General of Police Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid Bador, in issuing the warning, said police would take action as provided for by the law against the organisers and participants of assemblies that can jeopardise public order and national security. The IGP said in a statement, as part of a multiracial and multi-religious society, Malaysians must have mutual respect and tolerance for one another. He said to avoid any incidents that could undermine security and public order, the police had conducted investigations into sensitive cases which were reported, like the national flag being hung upside down, Dr Zakir Naik's lectures and the Jawi script issue. Investigation into Dr. Zakir's case was almost completed and the investigation papers would be submitted to the Attorney General's chambers soon for further direction, he said, adding that 515 reports had been received on the issue. On cases of the Jalor Gemilang being placed upside down, the IGP said police had received 68 reports and opened 19 <coughs> investigation papers. Datuk Sri Abdul Hamid said 24 police reports were received on the Jawi script issue and Bukit Aman police had recorded statements from Chinese education movement Dong Zhong's chairman and secretary. Meanwhile, Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Datuk Sri Banslan Lazim has issued a strong warning for the people to stay away from two illegal rallies in Little India brickfields. Now, he said the rallies are in protest against the proposed introduction of Hat in Tamil schools and against Muslim preacher Dr. Zakir Naik. Datuk Sri Maslan said the police rejected the notices on the rally sent to them because they were incomplete and did not meet the legal requirements. Jadi permohonan ini kita tidak benarkan untuk buat permohonan. Jadi sekeras-kerasnya saya tegas-tegasnya, setegas-tegasnya saya menyatakan bahawa kita tidak membenarkan permohonan ini diadakan. Jadi saya mintalah orang ramai tidak pergi berhimpun di kawasan tersebut. He said that if the organisers persist on going ahead with the rallies, the participants will be arrested under Section 9, Subsection 5 of the Peaceful Assembly Act 2012. Datuk Sri Maslan said the issues raised have been resolved by the government and there is no strong reason to hold the rallies.
Yes, in our top story today, stop raising sensitive issues and actions which can jeopardize public order. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.